Okay. So down to, so downtown central booking. I just said that like I got pulled out of the cop car by this guy who did seem like he was on a roid rage. <laughs> And like was grabbing me and I was like, what the fuck? Uh, and whatever. And they put me in some cell and I'm like, I'm handcuffed with my hands behind my back. And, and um, I'm speaking to this older black lady that I don't recognize. And I'm like, oh good, she's new. She's probably, hopefully she's not one of these bad ones that I've experienced before here, which I should have never experienced to begin with because I'm not a fucking criminal. <laughs> and, um, and I'm like, why can't I sit on the, well, my hands are handcuffed, but I'm like, why, why can't I sit on the, on the blue chairs? They have this area with the blue chairs when you're being processed, um, that you wait at, and then you go to each station sometimes. Um, and I'm like, why can't I sit on the blue chairs with everybody else? And then, um, and obviously I look a mess, uh, uh, cause the eyebrow thing is still like, <laughs> it's still, it's still in effect. Um, <coughs> so, um. I'm sitting there and like that, that roided, the roid rage white guy, he grabs me right here. And I had had a bandit here from when I was forcibly sedated at the hospital. I don't know if there was any like relationship, but he grabbed me like right, right above it or right on top of it or right above it. I'm not sure. But he squeezed my shoulder and I, don't have, and I was already sitting down in the cell, my hands cuffed. I have no idea why, why he had a need to touch me. Um, so he, but he did that. He squeezed my shoulder really hard. I have no idea why he did that. Again, I'm not claiming police brutality. It's just kind of odd. A lot of these things that happen, it's like, why did they do that? That's very odd. You had no reason to, you know, squeeze my shoulder really hard. But he squeezed it really hard, and I almost felt like there was like one of like those tied pods or like all those game pods that like it felt like like something had popped inside me. Um, I, that was just an effect that they did. But I felt I felt like this or this in, in, in my shoulder. Right where the right run where the um, bandaid was, where I was forcibly sedated, and then it felt like there was a hot iron rod going through my shoulder. And I'm still remaining calm. I'm still talking to the the older black lady, and um, and I'm like, my shoulder really hurts. I was like, and I, I don't know if I asked for my handcuffs to be taken off, but they were eventually taken off. And then um, then when my hand was put down, it felt like, and I don't know if it was from the angle, if it was a second beam, but then it felt like my hand right here, like it was, it was down like, like on my lap, and it felt like the beam was going through my shoulder to my hand. But again, it could have been a second beam. I don't know. But then like my hand, like right here, felt like there was like a hot, hot iron rod going through it. Like really, it hurt like a motherfucker. But I'm still remaining calm, and I'm still answering questions. And then, I don't know if it was before or after the handcuffs got taken off, but she put like this thing that looked like a mesh turtleneck over my head. And she was like, here you go. And I was like, I don't need that. I was like, I don't even know what it was. It's a spit guard. Someone had to tell me that a week later when I told the story to them. I was like, I don't need that. And she's like, yeah, you do. After already like several minutes of asking me, que of answering me, uh, uh, asking me questions and me calmly answering them for her. <laughs> And then I'm like, whatever. So then we go and then like my phone actually has a charge on it and like she's writing down phone numbers on it. She writes down, I think the second or third number, she writes down, uh, she misses a digit in there. She puts the area code and then two digits and there's a big gap and then a hyphen and then <coughs> Nobody writes the number, even a five-year-old does not write the number of numbers down. They might write down the number as a wrong number, but they don't write down the number of numbers wrong. And I think it was the middle number so, or the last number, but it's right there in the middle, a big gap. And it's like, I don't know if it was Tom's number, or if it was Isaac's number, or if it was like, I don't know. But uh, they wrote down a piece of paper and they gave it to me. And then I'm put trying to like dial the number. And then I missed, I hit to my, the wrong button and then I redial again. And I keep looking over my shoulder because it looked like they were fucking with me. They kept doing like, the, they kept doing like this little, or it looked like they were doing like a, and then like they kept doing like the whole bullshit with the sound effects. And so I'm on the phone and I think they're fucking with me. And, um, uh, and I just got my mug shot taken and it looked horrible. And I'm like, why can't I go, go to the bathroom and clean myself up somewhat, you know, <laughs> for this horrible mug shot. And, um, Whatever. I think that was the time that I had the horrible mugshot. I'm pretty sure it was the it was the time. It might have been the time before that. I'm sure they're all like not the best anyway. But um, I answered all the questions right. I can't remember if I talked to a counselor or not. But if I did, I, you know, I always answered no. I'm not thinking of hurting myself or anyone else. I was acting totally normal. I mean, I was a bit like you know, I wasn't saying motherfucker like I was you know in 
in the back of a cop car when they, when they were asking questions because I, you know, had just been tased. <laughs> but um, uh, then they take me to another cell and then they, I was already trans, I was already put into jail clothes and then they like strip me naked. And um, I'm like, why am I naked? And I throw a blanket at me and they're like, full suicide watch. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> there's been a mistake. And they left me there. And I'm sitting there standing, and all I could see in the window is just the hallway. So I threw the blanket down, and I was like, fuck this. So I was like, I'm not, like, I don't normally, like, want people to see me naked. Um, they aren't my demographic and aren't in the mood and, the, and like, you know, mutual um, situation. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like, fuck this shit. Like, you guys wanted to do this to me? Fine. Here I am naked. Whatever. I don't give a shit. I'm like, hello. Hello, and then one of the psychiatrists, uh, counselors or psychiatrists walked by, a psychologist, and she was like, oh. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, my eyes are up here. <laughs> and I'm like, hello, I'm sure that's just been a, and it wasn't one of those padded cells either, so I'm like, if, you, if I was on full suicide watch, which is total, utter bullshit, they do that sometimes just to fuck with people down there. They put, and then some people are like, well, we, you know, liability and all that, we don't know, utter bullshit. They, they fuck with people down there and they fuck with them in ways that like you can't report like how am I supposed to be like you know I did report about the number thing but I didn't have the piece of paper anymore because it had been taken from me in, during one of the transfers um, uh, and then uh, when I reported to the sergeant and did a Priya outcry uh, we'll get to that later but um, they do that and they fuck with you it's like, it's like why did they put a spit guard on me I didn't need a spit guard period so that's one thing to look into why did they put a spit guard on me after already several minutes of asking me questions and me providing answers in a calm way, um, even if I was, you know, angry, which I, you know, I wasn't, you know, yelling at them or anything, but even if I had been, I wasn't certainly spitting on them. So why would you put a spit guard on me? That's something we'll have to look into. It's like, it's just their way of saying, hey, we know you're being fucked with, and I'm fucking with you too, and I'm with the people fucking with you, and you can, and like you can't do anything about it. That's the message that I got from it, and I can't understand it being anything else than that, other than maybe they just think they're, they, they like to fuck with people down there, and they don't know about the, you know, the other, the other people on their team uh, doing, you know, terroristic things, but it doesn't matter. It's, you still shouldn't do that to someone. It's like, you, I was treating you with respect, why don't you treat me with respect? I mean, you're supposed to be always treating me with respect, even if I'm not treating you with respect, because, like, like we can't have people to do that because it's a slippery slope <laughs> and um uh, there's a bunch of sketchy people down there so i eventually got transferred to a padded cell and i was like excuse me there's been a mistake and then like apparently someone was like i'm tired of hearing him or like it's like it's like yeah it is a mistake we should have put you in a padded cell it's another thing if i'm on full suicide watch why did you put me in a non-padded cell where i could have hurt myself it doesn't make any sense none of this makes any sense so then I'm in the padded cell down there and they're fucking with me down there and I keep hearing them doing that and I, I keep thinking that they can, they're trying to make me think that they could read my mind. Not in the normal, not in a telepathy way, but in the sense of, and I talked about this in another video, there is a microphone that you can put in the back of your ear, it's a bone conducting microphone. Um, um, and when you think in, in whatever language you think in, when you think in conscious sentences, like full sentences or phrases, um, they have a microphone that can pick that up because signals go through your bones and like they can record that it's almost it's almost it's really not any different than actually saying it out loud um, there's also two signals that go down here and there's like Google, the Google Motorola division has a patent on a, a thing that they're looking into and there's another thing and they're looking into this for people that don't have um, the ability to speak anymore or for applications in which like you want to be able to speak in a loud environment with some sort of security and um, you don't want it to be recorded by other people. Uh, or when the ambient noise would, would make it hard to record. Um, but again, that, this microphone that's, that can go in the back of the ears and they can record unspoken thoughts, but like consciously thought out sentences, um, uh, that's been on the market for several years. And it's, and it's pretty good. <laughs> and uh, the, these things are there still in like, they're still in early, early stages of testing and like they're just testing like differences between like one of two words or uh, just a short few words and those are promising as well but um, I don't know if I'll ever get to the point uh, of the one that it's back here but this one's uh, actually out in the market consumers can buy them but they made me think that they had improved that technology in a way that like they could like you know pick 